To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that I shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Session 17, The Winning Formula. Operation Rebuilding concerning the construction and repairing of the walls of Jerusalem under the leadership of Nehemiah could have turned out to be one great story of failure in the history of leadership because of several factors. The walls were left in ruins for a century since the first return under Zerubbabel. His predecessors failed the complete rebuilding of the walls. Compare Ezra 4.21 Therefore issue an order from the king that this people be made to cease and that this city not to be rebuilt until I make a decree where Ezra was told to stop rebuilding the city. The people were discouraged and demoralized. There was no construction company to back Nehemiah up. His enemies were trying everything and in every way to stop the rebuilding project each step of the way. He faced seemingly insurmountable obstacles and problems, external opposition and internal strife. Unfounded accusation was made against him like slander, sarcasm, and even death threat were made against his life. In the light of the enemy's effort to stop the reconstruction through the use of verbal sarcasms, serious threats like slander, treachery, dangerous am ambushes, and seemingly insurmountable obstacles and problems, he could and should have quit, but he chose to stay on and focus on completing and rebuilding the wall. Under his leadership, the walls of Jerusalem were rebuilt in 52 days. Even Nehemiah's enemies considered that the effort was the work of God. 6, 15 to 16. The people were re-instructed in the law. Look at his accomplishments which he did through inspiration, instruction, perspiration, and influence. Sanders said these words, Not only did he rebuild the wall of the city in eight weeks, but over a period of his governorship, 13 years, he changed the whole face of the nation. He augmented the population of the city, 11-11. He restored temple worship, and the supremacy of the Word of God. He ended oppressive money lending and redeemed large numbers of slaves. He stopped marriages with Gentiles and enforced strict Sabbath observance. What was the secret of his accomplishment concerning Operation Rebuilding? A close reading of the book of Nehemiah gave us a winning formula. Conviction. It is universally recognized that in any successful endeavor, a leader must have conviction if he or she wants to be successful. That conviction must lead to action. What we think or what we believe is, in the end of later consequences, the only thing of consequence is what we do. So says John Ruskin. What is conviction? It is commonly defined as a strongly held belief, an unshakable belief in something without the need of proof. Words related to conviction are a steadfast faith, a settled belief or unshaken confidence, a subjective certainty, hoping against hope and prayerful hope. When his brother Hanai 
and a few others reported the news to Nehemiah about the ruined walls of the city of Jerusalem, he was affected. When I heard this news, I sat and wept, mourning for several days, fasting and prayer before the God of heaven. One fall. Later, he became convicted to do something about it because the name of God was at stake. Ruined walls were disgraced because foreigners would taunt them about their God who was powerless and weak to protect them. Joel 2.17, Micah 7.8-10 Having obtained permission from the monarch, he went to Jerusalem to survey the ruins in the night by himself. His conviction had included a sense of divine destiny and doing the will of God. We are not told where the conviction came from. Conviction can come from different sources, such as the Bible, books, sermons, personal experiences, exhortation, visions, counseling, and others. Convictions are important because the stronger the conviction, the greater the passion and perseverance to see the end results. Leaders who exert strong leadership are those with deep conviction. Louisa Alcott Strong convictions precede great actions. Franz Litz Broad paths are open to every endeavor, and a sympathetic recognition is assured to everyone who consecrates his art to the divine services of a conviction of consciousness. Wes Fressler Stand up to what you believe in when you know what you stand is right. You will find that you are already beaten when you are not ever willing to fight. In a matter of goodness and evil, it is not wise to sit on a wall. You must stand up for what you believe in, or you only be destined to fall. How can a leader develop conviction? Some of the ways are A. Study and learn what God says on a given issue. B. Choose to apply and obey the Word of God in every day. C. Expose ourselves to a need. D. Meditate on specific truths. D. Meditate on specific truths over a period of six months to a year. E. Decide what is worth living for and dying for. F. Associate with people who possess convictions in the same areas. And G. Settle an issue before we are forced to do so. The question to ask is, what is it that I believe so strongly and deeply that I am willing to die for that belief? Commitment. He was committed to the people and also to the project. It is people before the project. If you really want to do something that is significant for God and His people, you must be willing to move out of a comfort zone into places requiring the exercise of faith. Nehemiah was a leader cared enough to ask, one, one to three, to weep, one, four, to pray, one, five to ten. This is what differentiates a great leader from a good leader. In spite of such disparaging remarks, what does this bunch of poor, fevered Jews think they are doing? Do they think they can rebuild the wall in a single day by just offering a few sacrifices? Do you actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish ship and chart once at that? For two, he persisted. Facing intimidation, opposition, op obstruction, setbacks and obstacles along the way from without and scorn, 4, 1 to 6, 4, 4, 7 to 23, and craft, 4, 1 to 19. And from within, debris, 4, 10, fear, 4, 
11 to 14, and greed, 5, 1 to 13, he refused to quit because of his commitment to the people and project. Until I'm committed, there is a hesitancy, a chance to draw back. But the moment I definitely commit myself, then God moves or so, and a whole stream of events erupt. All manner of unforeseen incidents, meetings, persons, material assistance with which I could never have dreamed would come my way, begin to flow toward me the moment I make a commitment. Concentration Nehemiah was focused in operation rebuilding. To be focused means to prioritize one's work. Concentration is one of the secrets of success. Alexander Graham Bell say these words, Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work of hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. Effective leaders have something in common. They have the incredible ability to maintain a focus on what is most important and not to be distracted by issues that might be urgent but not the most significant. Have you ever noticed as you read about Jesus that he was never in a rush? He never seemed distracted or confused about his priorities. He lived with a single focus on the kingdom of God and doing his Father's will. To be focused also means some things cannot be done. There are many things a leader likes to do, but he or she cannot because of the lack of resources or time. How does a leader stay focused? He or she asks the following questions. A. Is what I'm doing consistent with my priorities? B. Is this within my area of competence? C. Can anyone else do it better? D. Do I have the time? And E. What do my trusted friends say? A focused leader is someone who says, This is the one thing I do, rather than the ten things I dabble in, says Howard Hendricks. The man who seeks one thing in life and but one may hope to achieve it before life is done. But he who seeks all things wherever he goes only reaps from the hopes which around him sows a harvest of blazing regrets. Poetry from Robert Buell Loin We're finished this chapter, and let me say a prayer for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for giving to us abilities and spiritual gifts to serve you. Jesus, we ask that you will also give us the conviction regarding an area of service for you. We pray that we will help fast to the commitment to your people and project through difficulties and hardship. Help us to concentrate on this one thing and forget the less important so that through the power of your Holy Spirit, your work will be accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live and reaching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.